Good morning, and welcome to the Jackson United Methodist Church on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. It is a beautiful weekend, and we're just glad to have you here joining us in our virtual worship service. Uh, as I've said before, we look forward to that day, hopefully soon, when we can all gather again together in person in our facilities and worship together. But for now, we will continue in this format and hope that it brings a special message to you. We continue to pray for everybody's health and well-being and for the leadership of our church and for the leadership of our county, state, and country. And uh, we just so look forward to that day when we will be together again. Again, thank you for joining us.
to worship at Jackson United Methodist Church. It's good to be together in worship today and we give thanks and praise for just our wonderful quartet and all the musicians that have helped uh, lead us in worship this morning. It's good to be with you as we lift up our hearts in praise. And as we do that, we want to take time to uh, go to prayer together today. And as we go into prayer, we want to keep several folks in mind, keep uh, our cancer folks in prayer, especially our young ladies, Christina Galbraith and uh, also uh, Kayla Barrett. We want to remember both of them in prayer. We want to remember those who are sick and those who are grieving. And uh, also let's remember the people in Beirut as well as the people affected by the Indian uh, plane wreck. And so we invite you to join along with us, to pray with us from home. But let's lift up our hearts to the Lord. Let's enter his throne of grace and, and go before that throne with great joy. Will you join me and let's pray. Father in heaven, we love you. We thank you for this day, for your goodness, mercy, and grace. We, we enter your gates with thanksgiving and we come into your courts with praise. Lord, let your Holy Spirit and your presence and power come in a mighty way in our season together. Lord, let your Spirit be at work here and at home, cleansing our hearts and washing our lives in the grace of your blood and sacrifice. Lord, we thank you for the forgiveness of sins. We pray, O oh God, that you might pick us up and strengthen us for the week ahead. Lord, give us hearts that are hungry for you, hearts that are hungry for holiness, to grow, to be more like you, Lord Jesus, to have your heart, mind, and spirit at work in our lives. Lord, to bring a spirit of renewal and revival to our church and to our community through this challenging season. Oh God, as you go before us, we just cry out in prayer for our community today. Lord, we pray for the sick in our midst. We pray for our cancer battlers. We Lift up especially Christina and Kayla and pray your healing power and presence for them and for others who are also uh, fighting back cancer. Lord Jesus, we pray as well just for the comfort of your grace for those who have had loved ones die recently. Watch out for them like Lynn Youngblood and, and her daughters, Abby and Aaron. And come Holy Spirit and be at work in our community. Uh, we pray for our teachers and our school superintendent and school council that you will empower them as they seek to get kids back to school here in just a few more short weeks. Lord, if we uh, just place our children before you and pray that you'll watch over them and give them a good year of learning in Jesus' name. Father, as you go before us, we want to see your spirit break out to draw our hearts into deeper, more passionate relationship with you, uh, a, a, more, a more loving way to embrace your loving goodness. And so Heavenly Father, will you go before us and be at work also in our state, in our nation and world. Lord, we pray that your wisdom and spirit will be at work guiding the leadership of our country and state. Lord, give them wisdom in their decisions to help uh, move us in the right direction and to keep us safe. Father, we pray for our policemen, especially that you'll strengthen them as they seek to do their job. May they do it with love and grace. Father, we pray that your spirit would be at work with our military men and women and that you'd watch over them wherever they may serve. Lord God, go before us and be at work renewing our nation, awakening those who are lost, providing opportunity for those who are looking for jobs. Lord, going before us to, to be with us in the midst of the storms that surround us. And oh God, we pray that you'll be at work to the very ends of the earth today, that your kingdom might continue to come, that your love grow, that you might reach the least and the last. Those, Lord, who are hungry, that you may use us, your church, to feed them, to those who are spiritually uh, thirsty that you may provide them the presence of your Holy Spirit and the good news of Jesus Christ. And Father, that in your goodness and glory that we may find you at work all over our world. So Lord, we lift these things to you. We pray that you go before us in the powerful name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Let's continue worshiping the Lord together as our quartet leads us once again. good to be back with you guys this morning. Uh, I miss seeing you all. It seems like anytime I see one of you out in public, I'm like, mm, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. And uh, just to let you know, we are trying to look at ways that we can get back together in live worship uh, in some way, shape, or form, hopefully in the coming weeks. We'll be talking about that in our Ad Council meeting uh, just uh, Monday evening. But uh, it's good to be with you again. And this morning we wrap up our look at the Sermon on the Mount. Here in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus has given us the heart of his teaching, the, the heart of being a beatitude kind of person and loving God with heart, soul, mind, and strength and praying well and loving your neighbor as yourself and, and uh, doing all these things to seek, knock, and know that the Lord is near. And so we wrap up the Sermon on the Mount today with the end of the seventh chapter where Jesus continues to challenge us with the wise and foolish builders. This is what Jesus shares. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who has built his house on the rock. And the rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish person who built his house on the sand. 
And the rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. Now when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority, not as their teachers, the law. This is the word of God for you and me, the people of God. We give thanks to God. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, let your Holy Spirit come and bless uh, our conversation together today. Lord, I pray that your presence and power would be stirring up our hearts to, to seek you, to ask from you, and to knock at your door, and to never stop seeking to make you all and all in our lives. So Lord Jesus, help me lift you up. I trust your power and presence to go before. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. This morning, Jesus talks about the importance of foundations for us. He talks about uh, the foundation of our lives. And, and uh, I was thinking about foundations. We had gone to the beach this summer. We had gotten away uh, a week in June before uh, the, the virus had spread significantly around everywhere. And uh, we were down a little south of St. Augustine, Florida. And while we were there, we were taking a trip up to visit St. Augustine. I'd never been there, the, the oldest town in America. And uh, so uh, as we were coming up uh, through there, uh, we saw some houses that were on the beach. And some of these houses, you could tell they'd been hit by the last hurricane. There were like four or five of them. They had been hit, they were right on the beach, they were in prime real estate on the sand. They were built on stilts 20 feet up in the air. And, uh, but when they'd gotten swamped by the last hurricane, uh, they had not been rebuilt. They had not been repaired. They had not been fixed. And I wonder if because of where they were, it was because that their foundation was not good enough and strong enough to last another major storm. They were afraid that these uh, houses in this particular area of the beach were gonna get washed away because their foundation was not good enough. I don't know for sure, but I know how much difference foundations make in giving us a solid place to build upon, whether it's our lives or whether it's buildings. You know, if the, if the people long ago had known that the Tower of Pisa would have been built in a place where it would tilt over, I'm sure they probably would not have built on that foundation. Whereas those who built the pyramids chose an excellent foundation even in the midst of a sandy desert. And those pyramids still stand on that strong foundation today. And so in our lives, what are we building life on? What are we building our foundations on? And Jesus warns us that how we respond to his message and his teaching. And not just whether we listen to his message or not, but whether we begin to do that message, whether we begin to take action according to his teaching in our lives will make the critical difference as to whether we build our lives on a solid foundation or a weak foundation. The weak foundation he talks about is to try to build our life on a bunch of sand. And so many of us, we don't even take thought for what we're building our life on. Are we building our life on our wealth? Are we building our life on our job? Are we building our life on our family? Uh, it, it doesn't matter. All these foundations are not solid when the storms of life come. And that's where we really begin to realize and understand uh, what our foundation is. You see, oftentimes we just live life and assume that everything's gonna work out groovy and be gravy. And as we do that, uh, we don't even think about a foundation for our lives. We just assume we'll be okay. But underneath there has to be either rock there or sand there. What reveals our foundation in life? Well, Jesus mentions it, it's the big storms. When a big storm comes, and Jesus affirms here that this life will have its share of big storms where the rain will fall and the wind will blow and, uh, and the rivers will sweep in. And if we don't have a solid foundation to build on, 
it can totally swamp our life so that everything falls and crashes uh, and goes kaput. And so the storm reveals how good our foundation is. And so in this season that we're in now with the, the virus going around and with the economy at a weaker place, uh, we're in a season that's going to begin to reveal what your foundation is in life and what my foundation is in life. And so in this season, what are you building on? What are you building on? Uh, the second thing that can reveal our foundation, I think, is our own choices. When we make bad choices in life, when we make foolish choices, those will eventually come back and bite us. They'll eventually come back and, and uh, turn us on our head and wash us out. And, and uh, how often have you looked back in regret and said, you know what, I, I chose this relationship or I chose this friendship and, and that person wasn't a healthy person and, and I shouldn't have done that. Or we, uh, we look at other areas, uh, whether it's choosing a career, or choosing whether or not I go to college or, or go into some other uh, type of work when we make bad choices, we look back on them and say, man, I really messed up. Again, that's a sign that we've chosen a foundation of sand. And so we don't have to keep making those bad choices though. God gives you and I the power and the grace and the goodness to, to be made new. It's good news that we have a second chance. It's a good news that we can shift from a foundation of sand to a foundation of solid rock. And Jesus says the difference between sand and solid rock is not listening to what he has to say. The difference between sand and solid rock is putting what he says into practice. Going out and doing it. As followers of Jesus, we are a people of action. We're a people who don't just come to church and don't just try to be good people. We are a people who seek to do God's will. We seek to listen for his voice. We seek to be in relationship with him. And we seek to do these things in a way that we put his teaching into practice in our daily lives. You know, that's something I hope that my kids see from Andrea and I at home. When we help someone in need, when, uh, when we work with someone who maybe isn't the easiest to work with, when we do things that other people wouldn't do or make choices other people might not make, I hope that they will see in us that we're trying to make Jesus's teaching real in our lives, whether it's with our checkbook or whether our time or whether our energy. That is what we're seeking to do because Jesus says that is the way that we build our house on the solid rock, on the solid foundation. So what's the keys then to building our house on a solid foundation? Well, as I've mentioned, the, the first key is really to listen for Jesus' voice. The first key is to listen to Jesus' voice. If, if I don't take time to hear what the Lord Jesus is saying, if I don't take time to, to ground my life in the humble beatitudes that he talked about at the very intro to the message, uh, then I'm going to miss the solid rock completely. And uh, how important it is that you are finding nourishment in the teachings of Jesus and the teachings of Scripture. I want to share with you a quote I heard a week or two ago from Adrian Rogers from his sermon, The Coming Kingdom of Christ. Now, Adrian Rogers, I believe, is Southern Baptist, but I'm not gonna hold that against him because he has a really good quote here. He says this when it comes to listening to Jesus. Do you think God really believes you when you say, I want to know the will of God, and yet you don't read the one book above all books that God has specifically written to show you his will, to reveal his will to you, to unfold his will to you? Don't you think that there's a little bit of hypocrisy in the person who says, God, I want more than anything else to do your will, and yet he does not study the word of God to find out what the will of God is. For those of you who, you know, maybe you don't 
don't know much about church, don't go to church, uh, those sorts of things. Um, we are a people who do value the Bible. We value scripture because we believe that it leads us to things uh, that are good, right, and true that you can build your life on, especially the teaching of Jesus. And so are you taking time every day, or at least most days a week, to read even one or two paragraphs, to sit at Jesus' feet and listen and learn? As you listen and learn, that's the first step. The second step the Lord tells us is then to put it into action. It, it literally in Greek, it's to go out and do it and keep on doing it. And y'all, that's the real key. Uh, because a lot of us, you know, we can be pretty good people. We can uh, go to church regularly, but it still seems like we can kind of compartmentalize our faith and say, well, I'll have it as a as an addition to my foundation. I'm really going to trust in my money or my job or my family or some other thing. But, you know, I'll tack on to that a little bit of Jesus and his teaching. But you see, if we only have a little bit of rock on our foundation, when the storm comes, we're still gonna get blown away. There must come a time in our lives where we make Jesus our whole foundation. And to do that, we can't just hear what Jesus says, we have to learn to do it. So when Jesus says to uh, forgive our spouse or forgive our children or forgive our coworker, we have to try to put that into practice, no matter how hard it might be. When Jesus tells us that, uh, that we have to love our enemy and be gracious and bless our enemy, uh, we have to put that into practice. We just can't say, well, that's good in theory, but you know, I, I, I really hate this person otherwise, and, and that's all I know how to do. We have to put Jesus' teachings into practice because if you want to know Jesus, if you want to live in a relationship with Jesus, the only way that I can tell you how to grow in a relationship with Jesus is to listen to what he says and to put it into practice, to begin to try and do it. Take a step of faith to begin to try and do it. And one of the biggest steps of faith we can take is to make Jesus not a part of our life and faith not a component of our life, but to make faith in Jesus your whole foundation. That comes through surrender. You know, last week I talked a little bit about surrender and talked about how few people really come to a place of where they willfully want to give up everything to the Lord. And we mentioned only two out of a hundred, and I know one of, the, uh, one of the things that easily comes back out of that is maybe, well, but I'm not a super Christian. If only two out of 100 people can really surrender, well, that leaves me out. I can't do that. And I ask you, why not? Yes, you can. It's available to anybody and everybody. The study I mentioned last week as well, I want you to realize that was a study done with the general population, right? And with the general population, if you come to church you're, you're already making more steps of faith than two-thirds of everybody else in the United States. So you're already in the top third. And so beyond that, um, you can choose to make Jesus your solid foundation. You can make them all in all. There's nothing that keeps us from doing that. The Lord doesn't look at you know, everybody on the planet and say, what 2% can I pick out to make my special super Christians? No, I believe if we will let the Holy Spirit come into our hearts and lives, if we'll let the Holy Spirit work powerfully in our worship and powerfully in our community and powerfully in our lives, then we can make Jesus our solid foundation. We can make him our all in all, and it can be half of people in church. It can be you. It can be me. The real issue and the real question is, is will we? Will we do it? Because that's where Jesus really helps us wrestle. And you know, it's not about arriving to the place of perfection or the place of being super Christian. Don't focus on trying to be perfect. Though our goal is to eventually look perfect as Jesus does. Instead, Jesus gives us all the clues we need. He says, 
Ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. Jesus' whole point is it's your desire to take your next step of faith that's most important for you to do in your relationship with Jesus right now. That's the most important thing. Whatever your next step is, ask, seek, knock, take. Take that next step and let Jesus be more your rock of your life, of your family, of your checkbook than he's ever been before. Because when you do that, you will find that your life will change. And so that's good news. And to kind of give you an example of that, this morning I do want to share and close with a personal story. This story is by a lady named Vivian Mabuni. Uh, she's a Chinese lady that grew up in Boulder, Colorado, and she wrote a book that she shared this story called Open Hands and Willing Heart, Discovering the Joy of Saying Yes to God. But she tells the story, she grew up in a Chinese Buddhist home in Boulder, Colorado. And in Boulder, there was a lot of free thinkers out there who were into new age and rocks and this and that and the other thing. All she knew is kind of a cultural Buddhism where her family would pay deep respect to her dead grandmother and her dead relatives. Uh, but other than that, their Buddhism didn't touch their daily life at all. She didn't know much about Christianity. She thought Christmas had to do mostly with Santa Claus and Easter had mostly to do uh, with uh, Easter bunnies and jelly beans and Easter eggs. But when she got to high school, one of her friends um, really began to change in her sophomore year, really began to, to kind of live a different life. And so she asked her one day, her name was Jean, she said, Jean, what's going on? Why are you different? And this is what Jean said. She said, well, Viv, I became a Christian. I have a personal relationship with Jesus now. He died to forgive my sins, and now I'm born again and made new. The glow is from my new life in Christ. And immediately Vivian thought, oh no, this is horrible. Jean it was so nice and so funny and so smart. Now she's gone off the deep end and become a Jesus freak. Well, as she began to hang out with Jean over the rest of the year, she found that she really was different. God worked in her life in specific and unexplainable ways. She liked to say that human beings could never be satisfied with relationships, shopping, awards, or achievements. God had made people with a God-shaped vacuum to fill that only he could fill. And so Vivian's heart said she felt restless. Even as a teenager, she already could see the futility of going after bigger, brighter, and better. The temporary thrill of winning an award or buying something new to wear could not relieve the emptiness she felt inside. And so one of the things that she began to learn as she interacted with Jean, is she began to realize how much of life was built on sand, on bad foundations. She began to realize that bigger, better, brighter, new clothes, what other stuff she could get, would not satisfy the deepest parts of who she was. And so she began to ask, seek, and knock herself. And as she did that, um, she gave her life to Christ at a youth group as a teenager. And as she did, she began to try to live the Christian life. But her first try wasn't very successful. She tried reading the Bible, and as she read the Bible, she said, man, this book, it's really boring. She tried praying, and whenever she would try to pray, she'd often fall asleep. She did enjoy going to worship and singing the songs and hearing the message. But uh, when she went home, it had little impact on her life. You see, ultimately, though she had said yes to Jesus in a superficial way, she still was building her life on the sand. This is how she says. She says, then I would drive home and my life went on as usual. I would return to my selfish ways and take matters into my own hands. Christianity wasn't working for me, so I planned to casually toss it aside like just another teenage phase. 
But just as she was beginning to decide to maybe turn away from Christianity as, uh, as her foundation, a storm came, and a major storm. Her dad had a crisis, and in that crisis, he chose to move his family to Hong Kong. And this uh, young teenager who had spent her growing up years in Boulder, Colorado, now had to adjust to life in Hong Kong with different language, different culture, different way of doing things, different school, all those things, and it hit her like a major storm. It swamped her and wanted to take her under. And in the midst of that, she came to a place where she had to make a choice. What am I going to build my life on? This is what she says. I remember sitting on my bed in our little flat, tears burning in my eyes. Angry and confused, I unleashed my frustration and let God know exactly how I felt. But at the end of my tirade, I added a sincere prayer. In my heart of hearts, I want to know you. I want to do your will. I need a church. I need a youth group and some Christian friends. And if you do that, I will give you my whole life. I'll hold nothing back. At school, she got involved in a debate team. At that debate team, she ran into another student from another school who said, hey, why don't you come to church with us? She started going to a Christian Missionary Alliance church that was near her home. And the very first time she was there, she learned a key lesson, that the Christian life wasn't just hard to live, it was impossible to live. Christian life wasn't just hard to live, but impossible to live, at least by our own efforts. It must be God who supplies the power source. Reliance upon him and his spirit enables us to live the Christian life, to be a Sermon on the Mount Christian. She says at that point she had a spiritual breakthrough. She felt like God had finally taken total control. She had firmly set her life on the foundation of Jesus, his teaching, and living it out. As she did this, she said that uh, she grew in her faith and uh, she began loving to read the Bible, loving to pray, and now she has served the Lord for over 31 years with Crew, uh, Campus Crusade for Christ. And she says, over the years, there have been times where I've had to recommit myself to God's rule in my heart and life. I've had to once again make him the foundation. But God has always been faithful. And that's what Jesus is telling us today. He's saying, guys, look at your life. If you're in the midst of a storm, what are you building on? Are you building on sand? Are you trying to build your life on stuff? Or have you made your foundation Jesus? Is he your one and only solid rock? Will you do anything he asks? Will you go wherever he sends you? Jesus says, build your life, put my teaching into practice, go out and live on that solid foundation. And when your storms come, which they will, I'll bring you through it. And so I don't know if you're going through a storm right now, but if you are, I want to invite you. Will you pray with me? Use this moment to ask Jesus to be your solid foundation. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, forgive me and forgive us when we look for other foundations for our life, when we build our life on sand. Lord, as we go through storms, we see that our life is falling apart and oftentimes it's our, a lot of it's our own fault. Lord, help us learn the lesson. And today, those that want to make you, that want to make you their solid rock. Lord Jesus, will you help them by your grace and your spirit? Help them surrender. Help them put their life on your foundation. Help them begin to find joy in uh, learning more about you in growing in faith, maybe in a small group, and in living out that faith by living out whatever you teach them to their family, their neighbors, their friends. Lord, help us make you our solid foundation so that we might be yours. 
In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for being with us again this week. We look to see you next week uh, where we're looking forward to having a special time of mission update from Casey Cottle and uh, her world race trip. And so I'm looking forward to doing something a little different in this uh, time of worship. And so we invite you to come back and join us then. You won't want to miss it. Go in the love of the Lord our God, who loves you with heart, soul, mind, and strength. Go in the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, who took the storm of the crucifixion and turned it into resurrection glory so that God can take our storms and bring resurrection out of them. And go in the power of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord Jesus, who will bless you with his grace and help you become a Sermon on the Mount beatitude follower of Jesus. Amen. And we'll see you next week.